Isn't the whole point to know our Prophet? To know your Shaykh. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, my servant, he becomes beloved to me when he fulfills all his obligations. Then he comes nearer to me when he fulfills those things that's not obligation. See how merciful Allah is? He's giving us an order and if we follow his order, he says, I love you. Where are you going to find that kind of boss? You think you're going to find that boss, you work, and then the boss is going to say, you work and I love you? No. And Allah is saying, if you, you come closer to me, understand, one is Allah is loving, but the other part is you come closer to Allah. You come closer to Allah. When you start doing things, it's not obligation. That means you don't have to be told what to do. You don't have to be forced. It's not in order. It comes to you. You already know because you have manners and you have intelligence. That time you come close and you come so close to Allah, Allah saying, I will be your eyes that you see. I will be your mouth that you speak. I will be your hands that you touch. I'll be the feet that you walk. Whatever you ask, I will give it to you. I will dress you with the dressing of lordliness. Oh. Where are we going to find another lord like that? Where are we going to, how are we going to know this, what Allah wants from us? As Shaykh Effendi is saying in the khutbah, how are you going to know? You must know from the Prophet ﷺ because he has sent the Prophet to tell us, instruct us what Allah wants. And the Prophet has inheritors and those shaykhs that we follow. Otherwise, as the khutbah is saying, Allah will not send any prophets down. He can just send a book. And Shaykh is saying not only did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala send the Prophet, but Allah sent Hazrat Jibrail salam, to say, to teach the Prophet salam, meaning that there is always now someone there who's going to teach you. But the uh, people who rejected the Prophet salam, they were not ignorant people when we look at intelligence of this world. They're the most intelligent ones. But what did they do to that Prophet? Why they're not accepting him? One of the major reasons, they look at him and they say, what's so great about you? They start judging him. They start saying, you're just a camel herder. You are an illiterate. They start judging him. Oh, just as shaitan in reality, he was judging Allah. Can you imagine? He was judging Allah. Allah says, make sajda to Adam alayhi salam. He judged. Because the faith of the believers, as Allah is saying, Aman Rasul, in that ayat, that ayat was revealed to the Prophet salam, without Hazrat Jibrail alayhi salam in the night of Miraj directly. And saying, these are some of the characteristics that the prophets and the people who believe they share. What do they have in common? They say, we hear and we obey. We hear and we obey. Samitna wa ta'na. And they say, Gufranaka, Rabbana wilaykum masir. Forgive me. They don't say, I hear and I obey, now reward me. I hear and I obey, now you must give me anything that I want. <laughs> the characteristic is, we hear and we obey and forgive us. Understanding what? Our obedience, our listening, our worship. We cannot obey Allah as He deserves to be obeyed. We cannot worship Allah as He deserves to be worshipped. We cannot praise Allah as He deserves to be praised. Only He can praise Himself the way that it fits to Him. A believer understands this. They worship, they obey, and they say, this is, obedience is still lacking. 
For that reason, we say, Gufranaka. Forgive us with all our failings, with all our dirtiness, but Rabbana wa ilaykal masir. O our Lord, to you is our return. Meaning the believer wants to return to Allah. The believer cannot wait to return to Allah. He does everything to be able to return to Allah. He's not asking for this dunya. He's not asking for the ahirat. He's asking to return to Allah because we have been in separation from Allah. That is love. We have been in separation from our Prophet. We're in separation from our Shaykh. You're not seeing with the eyes of your Shaykh. You're not touching with his hands. You're not walking with his feet. How are you going to have now? That belief, how are you going to have now? That faith, how are you going to be able to return? It's finished. That time, all you know is your ego. And your ego's destiny, it is a fire, nowhere else. But man will know. Everyone will know. Everyone will wake up. There is no way that people are not going to know. Everyone will wake up. As Hazrat Ali Kamal Wacha is saying, man is sleeping. When he dies, he will wake up. And what the Evliya is saying, what Holy Prophet is saying, die before you die. Wake up before it is too late. When you actually wake up, you cannot do nothing. Wake up now. Because you don't know when the angel of death is coming. We are a prisoner between two breaths. Ah. And if you are aware, uh, awareness of breath, one of the principles of our order. It's very heavy, maybe. No one can carry it. We're not saying have now sit and have these breathing exercises, mixing up so many things. They say no. Just watch yourself. When you're sitting in sohbet, watch yourself. Watch your heart. When you're making a zikr, watch yourself. Watch your heart. Watch your breathing. Don't be rebellious, want to do anything that you want. Train yourself a little bit. As the Sahabi Kiram, they were like statues when the Prophet spoke. We train ourselves. Why? Because we want to die before we die. Because in that grave, we're going to feel everything, but we cannot move. You're going to feel everything. Prophet says, wash the dead body with water. Don't make it too hot or too cold. Because the body feels everything. You're not even training your breathing in your body for some minutes here and there. Then when we wake up in that grave, it's going to be too late. All the worms and all the snakes and all the scorpions are going to come. Going everywhere, biting everywhere, hurting everywhere. You're screaming. No one is hearing. The intelligent man must understand this now. This is why we're following our shaykh. We're not sitting in judgment. The mushriks, they were judging the Prophet. They're trying to trap him in every move, in every way. Trying to prove him wrong. Trying to say that he's crazy. Sounds familiar? And that night of Miraj, where he goes, and part of him returns, that was one of the biggest tests for the believers. That they are going. They will return. Not in a way that we understand. Understand? There is a test for the believer. But our return is to back to our Shaykh, back to our Prophet, and back to our Lord. Inshallah, yeah, we are very weak ones. Don't be arrogant. We are very dirty ones. Don't be arrogant. We are all broken ones, worse ones. Don't be arrogant. Because the arrogance comes in hundreds and thousands of ways. You cannot see it by yourself too. 
you have to be shown, a mirror has to be put in front of you. Then you make the choice. If you like it, you change. If you don't like it, wait for the angel of death. But we are not empty. Our share is filling it. Our share is not empty. And we're not speaking from our stomachs, but for those who want to listen, it is up to you. Choice is yours. For myself, I tried it. It's working for me. <laughs> I want to share it. You like it, you take it. You find a better thing, go. Good luck. Wa min Allahu tafik. Hurmatul Habib, hurmatul Fatiha. Nani. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.